think a lot of the reasons why people get so hooked by clay are the old reasons that were talked about in the arts and crafts movement. You know, it's a, a kind of an on, truth to materials and a kind of an honesty of process and a, a work site that is humane. This wheel can have kind of nice sounds. I think handmade objects are seen as a kind of an antidote to the ills of modern society. I love the focus that I can bring to it. I seem to need to be grounded in utility just in terms of my own making. Otherwise, it's just too huge. Fine. Okay, now, bowls. Now, in the case of bowls, you do the... Th There's a little bit different dynamic with, with uh, vertical things. You're supporting with your inside hand and pulling with your outside hand. With bowls, it's exactly reversed. In fact, I'm even going to, in a minute here, I'm going to reverse the direction of the wheel. Um, but see, I'm scooping with that left hand. So that's a little more force on the hand. And it would be, um, since this is really no size at all, it's not prohibitive, but... Uh, see, I don't really have all my tools gathered here. Got an air bubble. Right. Forgot which way I'm going to go. Okay, now I'm reversing the direction of the wheel. I can get in there with my right hand and make that curve. Great. I've been finding that uh, just in the last couple of days, knowing I was going to start throwing again, I started to get little visual ideas kind of popping into my head because I haven't been thinking that way at all for the last couple months. The man I studied with, Bernard Leach, had spent his childhood in China, in colonial China, because his father was a judge. And Bernard fell in love with the great Asian pots of antiquity. And at that time, very late 19th century, there still were folk potteries where pots were produced by villagers Bernard's observation was that they were terrific potters. He was a kind of a romantic guy, and he was a product of the arts and crafts movement. And so he thought that, that because of the non-analytic way that the pots were produced, and the fact that they were based on traditional pots, he thought that that was what gave them quality. So he went back to England and he started this pottery, and for many decades, the leech pottery attracted people like myself from all over the world who wanted to study with leech and who wanted to make pots that were based visually on the great Asian pots from Korea, Japan, Japan and China. I still, to this day, look at and, and draw inspiration from the great folk pots of the world.
of all the different continents. And, uh, those pots are very much part of my visual vocabulary. I think because I haven't been a stylist, but have continued to practice within this traditional vein of pottery, that it's really easy for people to just use me and my life in clay as an example in which they can kind of, into which they can fit their own practice. I, don't, I think I went all through college without thinking what I was going to do after I left, I, which now seems <laughs> incredible to me, but I just didn't think. I just thought it would solve itself when I was done with the education. I was only thinking that I was enjoying art. I might not have want, predicted this life for myself, but I'm good at it now because I had to be. I mean, it's either that or be unhappy. And the converse side of that, I mean, that just sounds like making up for what you lack, but the converse side of that is you, you experience more and more joy in what you do. So the emotional space gets used up one way or the other, so to speak. Sometimes the most influential things are kind of opaque to you. Um, had a terrific art teacher who probably was more influential than I realize. Her name was Julia Crew, and she had studied um, color theory with Joseph Albers. And, She's an amazing woman. Yeah. I think another thing that I can't underestimate is girls camp. I mean, it's just kind of laughable, but I, I used to go to camp starting from when I was seven years old all summer long. And the camp was um, very achievement oriented. I mean, you had all your different crafts, and then have, they had all these arcane levels of achievement you could reach and get rewarded for, and there was a lot of intense. It was a subculture, you know, and, it was, and the friendships in it were very intense, as I think they are in pottery, um, and very disciplined. Uh, very, it made good girls out of us all, you know. And I, I think I'm a good girl to this day, you know.